So today we're going to talk about parallelism and its effects on uh, agent-based modeling. So in the early 1990s, Danny Hillis developed an architecture for a parallel computer he called the connection machine. Now, unlike traditional von Neumann type architectures that we've talked about in the past, right, there wasn't a single CPU, right? Instead, there would be thousands, or, or central processor unit, instead there would be thousands of low cost, low capacity processors that were connected together. So there was no central processor, right? And so the idea was that each of these individual processors could represent a single calculation or single event. He then developed, and his colleagues then developed a framework known as the single instruction multiple data. So one way to think about it is, imagine that you have a similar data set spread across all these different machines, right? Or all these different processors. I shouldn't say machines because they're all within one uh, machine. You could, they could all have slightly different data on them. But then you can execute a single instruction that would then be executed by all those processors manipulating the same data um, in, or sorry, different data in the same way. Um, and Hillis, in fact, founded Thinking Machines in part uh, to commercialize this particular product and to build this into more, right? Now, um, the problem with uh, this notion of parallel uh, machines, parallel processors, was that it was very, very difficult to program. Humans, as much as we do act like parallel machines and our brains kind of fire off in parallel ways, we like to think in a linear form, in a sequential form. Uh, and so you actually need to develop special languages to actually program these machines. So by the end of the 80s, at least two languages, Starlisp and C Star, were developed to program the connection machine, what was called the connection machine, right, that the machines developed. And in fact, the Connection Machine 2 had 65,536 individual processors, right? Um, and data was spread across these processors. And so as a result, there were a lot of things that, result, that, that involved many, many data sets that you want to do the same thing to that were very easy for this machine to do. For instance, document retrieval, right? Imagine that you have 65,000 documents. You give each processor a, a, a single document you want to look at. You then tell each processor to count up the number of times the word connection occurs in each of those documents, right? Um, you can then pull out the document that has the most numbers of the word connection in it fairly quickly from the system, right? Much faster than you could through a single processor. Object recognition, same thing, except for now you have graphics instead of text, right? It's very useful for things like cellular automata, because cellular automata could just read in the input states of their neighbors, update, and then output, right? Um, and in fact, StarLogo, which you could think of as an early form of agent-based modeling in many ways, was written in StarLisp and used some of these same notions. Um, and in fact, informed the development of some of the work of, Star, of uh, other um, uh, agent-based modeling languages out there. So um, what does parallel programming have to do with agent-based modeling? Well, you have this idea that you have many, many different entities that all have their own individual computation, right? And a lot of times, age-based modeling, the goal is to think of them as parallel entities acting. And even though, in the end, we often write them from a sequential standpoint, right? Uh, and so in many ways, parallelism and that notion gave rise to some of the thoughts that maybe you could create within age-based models, right? This idea of parallel action happening simultaneously. Um, and there's been some uh, interesting discussions recently about what's the difference between asynchronous, synchronous, uh, parallel, and, uh, and serial operations. And so I'm going to take a quick dive into um, the, one of the models that shows a little bit of the difference there, which is the termites model uh, in uh, NetLogo. And we'll kind of talk a little bit about that. Um, but yeah, but parallel has a lot of effect on our thoughts as to how to build agent-based models, even though many of our agent-based modeling platforms are still serial in nature. Hi, so to explore parallelism a little bit more, we're gonna bring up the termites model in the NetLogo models library. And this is located under biology, termites, right? Um, and it's the one I have up right here. And let me blow that up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, and you know, like always, I always like to just kind of start by showing off what the model does. And as you can see, what the model does is it has a bunch of termites who are either white or orange. Um, and they're picking up these wood chips, which are the yellow things, and they're slowly accumulating them into piles. Now, that doesn't, it looks just like a lot of NetLogo models we've looked at, nothing special, except for one thing you might have noticed. 
At the upper left corner of the go button is this little turtle icon that looks like a, a you know, a, a small uh, caricature of a real turtle. And if you look at the code inside of that button, you'll notice that normally where it says the agent that is executing the button is the observer, here it says it's the turtle, right? And the reason why that's being done um, is because of the fact that when you do buttons as either turtles, patches, or links as opposed to the observer, they essentially execute in a kind of synthetic concurrent or synthetic parallel form, right? Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about what the code actually does, but one way to think of this it's almost like it's doing an ask turtles go, but it's, it's not really because as turtles by itself would still run in a, in a sequential manner. If you did an ask concurrent turtles, which is a special way to ask a, 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 a to run the ask command, then it would run like that, right? But the buttons do it implicitly, and so let's talk a little bit about what the code actually does now that we've talked about what the button is. So if we go down to the go button. Right. What we'll find is that it, you know it's actually a turtle procedure, meaning that it's executable by turtles. And so the commands are search for chip, find new pile, put down chip. If we look at search for chip, it says if your color, if the patch you're on is yellow, then set the patch to black, set your color to orange, and go forward 20 steps. Right. So essentially, you're picking up a chip if you're standing on top of one. And then you're gonna, and if it's not yellow, then you're gonna wiggle a little bit and search for a chip, right? Um, which just executes the same command again. So what happens is that the, the turtles will keep executing this command until they actually find a chip, right? And because of the way the um, turtle button procedures work, what that means is that each turtle is going to continue executing that little piece of command until it changes the world around, until it comes to a stopping point. So this search for chip command will be executed by the first turtle randomly selected until it actually finds a chip, and then it will stop its execution. It won't run find new pile and put down chip until another turtle runs and does it, and then it will pass back. And eventually, every turtle will execute all three commands, but they'll be interweaved. Like some of them will be running put down chip while some are running find new pile while some are running for search for chip. And the, the only way it'll start back over and go back to search for chip is if they all the turtles in the model have completed all three steps, right? So this kind of does a synthetic parallelism. And the reason why we call it that is because the turtles are actually operating in parallel, but they're operating in a way that you don't know exactly what turtle is at what state in the code, right? And so as a result of that, they're, they're, it's almost as if they were operating in parallel. Each one moves until it changes the world, and it lets another one move until it changes the world, and so forth, right? So then there, um, so let's talk, we talked about the search for chip, find new pile. If the patch that you're on is yellow, um, then wiggle and find new pile, right? So you're gonna keep running this code until you're no longer on a yellow patch. And then the final piece of command you, you call is put down chip, right? So when the put down chip says, if the color you're on is black, set the color to yellow, um, set the, you know, um, set my color to white, set the patch color to yellow, set my color to white, get away, which is a command that basically just moves you away from where you are. Um, and if it isn't black for whatever reason, somehow you, it changed, because it's possible that another termite came along and put down a chip while you were there, then it's going to actually, um, uh, then it's gonna actually move away and try and put down a chip, right? Because it's gonna assume that you're near the edges because you were on a black just a few seconds ago, right? Okay. So basically what's gonna happen when you start up the model, a random turtle is gonna be selected. It's gonna run search for chip until it finishes. And then another random turtle, including that turtle, is then selected to execute. And it could run search for chip, or if it's the same turtle, it's gonna run find new pile, right? Until it stops, right? And then this is gonna keep going, keep going, keep going um, until all of them execute. So how do you actually see this parallelism? Well, it's a little hard if we hit setup, and then we hit go, and then we crank down that speed quite a bit. What you might see is that some of the turtles are going to be orange at the beginning. Actually, you know, a good way to do this right, uh, is just, let's stop it for a second, let's type go, 
which will make sure that uh, sorry ass turtles go which will make sure that everyone is executed once right and now we're going to talk to the turtles and have them go again oh I forgot to slow it down have them go again and what you'll see right is that some of them will will turn orange before the other ones do and you'll have multiple ones in the state of orange over time uh, before all of them clear up right so so some of them are orange some are white right now because they're ex executing almost as if they're executing in parallel right even though some of the other ones are still moving and looking around right so this kind of gives you a synthetic parallelism it's this is one of the earliest models um, and you know it's a very interesting that was ever written in NetLogo uh, kind of comes from some of the older work that was done in NetLogo uh, and you know I really recommend taking a look at it if you want to see kind of a way to kind of do a synthetic parallelism in your in your HR based model thanks